Hi, in tonight's Omar Vision tutorial, we're going to go over how to use Python ML Agent Library to train a game object to move to the right versus all the other directions. So let me just go through some explanations here. For example, I'm going to use ML Agents Library, which I'm downloading from Unity Technologies ML Agents from GitHub. You could just type in ML Agents Download to find this page, and then you could download, if you scroll down the page, the latest release of ML Agents, the source code. Okay, download. Then to run this Python code on your machine, I download Anaconda, which is an IDE for Python. And I just scroll down to the bottom, right over here, and I have a Windows 64 bit computer. I download this. Okay, so to start up the ML Agent library, which I have here, I'm going to start it up again for you guys. I'll just go to my Anaconda install and I start up the navigator. From the navigator, I go to environments, and here I have some Python environments. So the ML Agent um, release 13 environment I have right here that I kind of created, and I pointed it to my GitHub ML Agents download code. Now from here, I'm just going to open up a terminal, and from here, I could run ML Agents, ML Agents Learn. And then um, this library is ready to listen to a Unity game. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to show you my example here in Unity. This is one that has a trained brain for these cubes. They're all going to move to the right. They're all using a trained brain. So you see the behavior is a little bit unpredictable, but in the end, all these cubes are trained to move to the right. What we're going to do is we're going to do this together. Let me just start a new scene. To use the ML Agents Python library in Unity, I need to make sure that I have a package installed. That's the ML Agent package. So I could go to Window Package Manager, and then here is ML Agents, and I have it installed already, so I have the green check mark. All right, so I have the ML Agents library, and then I have Unity here with the ML Agents package. So here I have an empty scene. Let me just add two things. I'm going to add a floor. Let's call this a floor. Floor. Then I'll also add in a cube to be the agent that we're going to train. So I'll just call this agent. OK, this is the thing we're going to train to move to the right. I have some materials here. Let's make the floor dark color, and let's make the agent orange. Agent orange. Um, I'm going to make a scenario, a training scenario for this cube. So just to keep things neat, I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'll call it scenario. And you'll understand why I'm going to do this in a little bit. I'm just going to put a text box there. So I'll just right click and 3D object, 3D text. And so I could like see information. And I'm also going to put a UI text at the bottom. All right, now I'm going to start with the coding. So let me pick my agent. And I'm going to create a script for the agent. So this scenario is, what did I call this scenario? I called it move right. So let me make a script called move right. And I want to use um, ML agents in the script. So I'm going to say using unity.mlagents. That way I could change this from deriving from model behavior to deriving from agent. And I could take this out. So um, the agent functions, I could see what they are. I could just go over here and say, uh, go to definition, and now I can see all these agent functions that I could override. First one I'm going to override is the initialize, so public override. And I'll just type in initialize, and it should come up in the smart. And then I can just press enter. I want to get the initial position of my cube. So let's make a private vector3 original position of the cube. And then here in the initialize, I can store that. Z. So I'm going to store the initial position, so every time I start a training episode, I could replace the cube back in its original position. So I'm going to override another function from the agent class. Override. It's the um, on episode begin. Every time a train episode begins, I will set the position of the cube back to the start. Okay, and also I have a globals class that's going to keep track of how many episodes and stuff are happening. So I will inc increment my episode count. This is for debug information. And now I have to say um, another override. This is when I get an instruction from the um, ML agent library or from a brain to do something. On action received, it's basically the, either the ML agent library running in training mode or the brain that is created, this little brain file, is going to send the action to anybody listening to it. So here, the on action receive is going to receive a vector action. Um, so the vector actions are really nothing but um, values. And I'm going to have two values come in as actions from the neural network. One's going to be a 
a value that I'm going to use to move on the x, and another one's going to be a value that I use to move on the z. So, whew, vector 3 dot right is to move left and right. So I will move by the vector action at 0. I'm going to use the first value as the right, times a move speed. Ooh, so I need a move speed variable times time dot delta time. Okay, so let's add another variable up here, public float move speed, and I'll set it to 20. So that's moving left and right. Then I'll have another this dot transform dot translate. I just want to show you that the ML agent library is going to send random values. So let's just make a function called screen text, All right? And then over here, I could just give some values there to that. So I need to know what the text info object is. That is this object right here. All right, let's do it in the code. So text info equals null. And then in the initialize, we'll set the, that equal to the thing from the scene. Okay, and I should solve that. So the another thing is I'm passing in the vector action values here. So ref vector action. Now we need to know when do we reset an episode? When do we do another episode? So we'll do bounds check. So if the cube moves off the floor, then we will just start a new episode. So when it moves off the floor, we're going to have to know about the floor's bounds. So let's make a variable private bounds bound floor. Okay. Then in here, we'll get the bounds for the floor object. Renderer. Renderer. And the bounds object, which just says where in the scene the bounds object is. So now in the bounds, the bound check, we could do a check. So if this dot transform dot position dot x is greater than the bound floor dot max x, that means we went off the right side. We will end episode. You're off the floor, but we will call this a win. So we're going to add to our variable for the um, successes for now. And then we're going to add something for all the other directions. So here in the bounce check function, if it goes off the right side of the floor, I'm going to call that a success. So in my little globals class, I'm just going to increment that count for success, something I found that I want to happen. Then if it goes off any of the other sides, like the left, the front, or the back, I'll just increment the counter for fail. But when it goes off the floor, all of these will end the episode, which will begin the next episode. The move right script, I'll drag and drop it on the agent. And when I drag the script on there, it's going to add a behavior parameters component from the ML agent components. The name is going to be the name of my file when it makes the brain, so I'll call it move right. The um, vector observation and the vector action. Let's explain these. Let me go back to the internet here, and I want to show you a picture of the neural network, which is what the ML agents is creating, a neural network. So basically, a neural network has um, vector observations or inputs. This one here has three inputs. And then all the nodes in the middle, they are the neural network. So values come in the inputs. They get multiplied by small decimal values to create an output. So this neural network takes three inputs to produce one output value. This neural network takes three inputs to produce two output values. Because our input value that we're going to put in is going to be um, probably what the cube could see. So it's going to look down at the floor and on, around it when it's moving around till it sees the edge of a floor, if it's going to move there or not. So let's add that to the neural network, the agent. Let's add ML agent's um, ray perception sensor 3D. And this is some ML agent code to that. It's a component that basically it shoots out these rays and feeds that information into the vector observation for our ML agent neural network. OK, so let's see. The rays are shooting out in that direction. Let's see what the ray perception sensor thing has. It has detectable tags. What is it going to detect? It's by tags. So let's have the floor, and let's tag it floor. OK, and the floor is static. Back to the agent. Now here in the detectable tags, we could just add floor. So the rays are going to look for the floor. Let's spread these max ray degrees out so that at least we have a ray in every direction. Um, now let's shrink down the length of the rays. Well, we're going to play around with these settings. Let's see what it looks like at point 0.2. That's better. Let's do this to get them a little tighter. 
So how many inputs are these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven. So now on the behavior parameters, I want to have my vector observation, my inputs, to be seven. Okay. Now for the vector actions, I want to have my actions be on the other end of the neural network to either be move in the z-axis or the x-axis. So that's two. So you could have discrete values, but I'm going to use continuous. So my space size will be two. We don't have a brain yet. So that means that our mode is going to be um, using the ML agent library. All right. So seven inputs, because we have seven rays that are on our ray perception sensor inputs, and then vector action the outputs. We have two outputs because the action that our game object could take is to either move in the z-axis or the x-axis. I think we could run it, except we need one more thing. This on action received method, it needs something to call it. It's like an event handler. So we need to fire off, fire off an event that asks the neural network, what do I do now? So there's a component we could add to the game object. Add component, ML agents. We're going to add a decision requester. So let's save all that. Now if I run this, I think that these things should light up and say something. Again, I'm just going to play it. And I should have my displays for debug information show up. Okay, it's the first episode, but nothing's moving, nothing's happening, because there's nothing for the brain to get messages from. For that, let me press stop. I need to run the ML agent library over here. CLS is clear the screen. So I'm going to start the ML agent library, but I want to change the path. So let me just go over here, and let me just get the path to my assets folder. I'll copy that, and I'll use it in my ML agents interface cd for change directory to that unity path okay and now i'll start the library um ml agents i want it to learn okay and i'm just going to use the word force to start from the beginning so i press enter and i wait and make sure that i get this unity logo and you'll see here that now the ml agent library is listening on port 5004 which here i have the ml agent package it's going to communicate on port 5004 the two applications are going to talk to each other and now you'll see when i press play the ML agent library is sending values to the cube. Now, every time it does hit one of the edges, it kind of goes back to the middle and starts over again. It's just running really, really fast. And we could see here there's four sides that you could come off the floor. So it makes sense that the right side is coming off about 25% of the time with a good randomness. And that's what's happening now. We want to change that, and we want to make it learn to come off on the right side instead of the other sides. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the script for the move right script that we have on our agent. And we're going to give rewards every time we get a result that we like. And we're going to give punishments every time we get a result that we don't like. So the way we do that is the agent um, class that we're deriving from, it has a function called add reward. This is how we tell the neural network things that we like that it's doing. So every time we come off on the right side, let's add a reward of 1. And every time we come off on any of the other sides, let's add a reward. That's the name of the function. But instead of adding a positive value, let's add negative values. 0 0.01. And then we'll just do that for the other three things that we don't like, that we don't want to happen. It's kind of like a reward and punishment system for developing a behavior. So these numbers, you know, we got to play around with it a little bit. We're not sure about what they're going to work like. But I'm going to try these numbers. So now let's try this again. So every time I stop Unity, the, the ML agent library also stops. And it saves the, um, the ONNX file, the brain. It saves that neural network file. And this is where it saves it to the results PPO. So let's do another train, agents, learn, force, and press enter. I see the Unity logo, and it's listening. Now I can start the game over again. Let's press play. And now through all these episodes, all these experiences, the training is occurring. And what I am hoping is that after a lot of training, that the percentage of successes is higher than 25%, because 25% was just pure random. So here it's going along, and there's a, we're almost at 200 episodes. The percentage is still kind of low. It's going to take a while. Let me stop that. A way to increase the training speed is to actually just make more copies of a scenario where the agent is connected to the same brain name. So here I go. I'm just going to take scenario here, and I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times. So duplicate. I just want to move them far enough away from each other so that these raycasts don't hit the other one. And now I'm having 16 times faster the training should go. ML agents learn force. Every time I use force, it's going to um, start a new brain to train from the beginning. OK, so now here I am back here. I'm going to press play. And now we should see that the episode that's getting many more episodes per second than it was before. See, so look at this. I'm already going to be up to 200. 
and I could see the results here. They're all still going all over the place. So let me stop and think. So when it, what happens is every time it sends um, observations, it's doing it, it moves, it sends observations. It's not getting a sense of a velocity or a direction that the cube is moving in. So what I'm gonna do here is in the behavior parameters, there's a thing called stack vectors. So instead of sending just one instant in time, I'm gonna send like the like a history of traces. So let me increase this to like five or something and let's see if that helps the training. All right, I just went back to on the one and I made the copy, so I have nine. Let's try this again, ML agent, agent, learn. Enforce a new brain. And here we go. Press play. And let's see what we got. Okay, they're all moving. They're training. They're moving. So we're at almost 200 now, and it doesn't look like it's anything really learning, but let's give it some more time. Okay, we're reaching 800, and still kind of doing bad. Let's let it get some more time. Okay, now we're coming up on 2,000 training episodes, and now the percentage is getting higher. It's starting to learn. It's at 54% success rate. And you can see the more of them are moving to the right. Let's give it some more time. Okay, we're coming up on 4,000 training episodes. Now you can see the numbers here. The fails number is really incrementing much slower. The success is incrementing a lot. And you can see through all our little example trainers that they do move to the right. They're no longer coming off on the left or the other sides. So if I think um, my training is good enough now, I could just press stop. This is also a way you could make some game objects smarter than others. Where you stop your training is kind of like how smart it could be, how good the enemy could be to beat, you know. I'm gonna stop it now. And then if I look in the project assets window, you see the results folder over here. Over here, this stopped and it's telling me that it made a um, move right file, okay? It's the 54970 version of it but it's in the results PPO, move right. So now I'm gonna tell you how to switch to use the brain to control the movement. So you see here, I am not starting up the ML agent library. If I press play, nothing's gonna move because uh, there's nothing to get an input from. But I'm gonna press stop. And what I'm gonna do is for all these scenarios here, let's just take the first three. Let me get rid of these guys here. I just needed them to increase the training speed. I'm gonna take the first three, agent, scripts, okay? And here in the behavior parameters, I'm gonna switch it to use the move right brain that I just trained. Boom, move right. And let's see the results. Remember, the ML agent library is not running, so the actions for these game objects are coming from the brain. And you can see now that they move to the right, they all kinda, it's not, they're not all moving the same, but they all, with their own brain, are deciding to move to the right. And this is the beauty of using the ML agent for your um, non-playable character's intelligence. It's not exact, but it's gonna have a general goal that they have in mind and they're gonna get to it their own way. They're gonna figure it out themselves. This code is gonna be on um, my omervision.com website. And there's also another video that I have that goes over how to actually set up the ML agents on your computer with the Anaconda. It's a short one, you can look at that. I may have a lot of videos here, so when you come to the tutorials page, just use the search here to type ML agents, and you will only see my ML agents videos that have anything to do with ML agents. You made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects, and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.